Hey everybody, uh, my name is Mark Hurdle. Uh, I'm a senior PM at Indiegogo. Um, and today, uh, thanks to Product School, um, I'll be going through a PM's guide to managing. Um, so starting off, uh, why is stakeholder management important? Um, well, product managers uh, manage more than just a product. Uh, we just, uh, we manage um, the relationships that we have with everyone who's involved with the product. Um, so that doesn't just involve the product lifecycle, um, but it also involves uh, everything that goes in between managing um, projects by projects. So all of the key stakeholders, all the different teams within the company that are involved with what your product may touch, um, those relationships are something that you manage as well. Um, so making sure that you have a good grasp on how you work with your stakeholders, particularly internally, um, is going to be really valuable um, for your time at wherever you work. Um, while managing uh, stakeholders, uh, you will find that you can find a lot of valuable insight um, in all areas throughout the company. Um, so if you have a great uh, relationship with the folks that you're working with, um, you'll be more able to sort of take advantage of um, you know, the knowledge that you're able to find. Um, so individuals on the sales team may be able to make it really, um, they may be able to provide a lot of great insight into what are things that new clients are looking for that other competitors may do better. Um, if you're working with someone on the marketing team, um, they may be able to provide you some insight on what are some really exciting things that you could provide that would make it easier to market a product or to market a new feature that's being released. Um, so if you have a great relationship with your stakeholders and you've really managed um, that collaboration well, um, you'll be able to really utilize the insights and the knowledge that they have um, in ensuring that you're building a great product and that you're building and releasing features um, that your users will find valuable. Um, kind of leading into my next point, um, great stakeholder management can lead to a smoother product lifecycle. Um, as a product manager, it's your responsibility to um, not just bring ideas to the table, but bring those ideas to life. Um, and in doing so, you're going to be working with a lot of different people um, throughout that process, depending on how small or large that project is. Um, if you have a great relationship with the stakeholders that you're working with, it'll help make that life cycle a lot smoother. Um, so even starting with the brainstorming phase, um, all the way through the actual release and maintenance um, aspects um, of development, um, as long as you're continuing to work with these individuals well, you're having uh, constant check-ins, status updates, getting insights and learning how to iterate on your projects while you're um, within development, um, that'll help make you have a much smoother product lifecycle. Um, it really sucks to be halfway through a project and then get some insight from a team member that you wish you had at the very beginning um, that you didn't uh, receive because you didn't really manage that relationship and you didn't communicate with them earlier on in the process. Um, so being able to you know, keep that in mind and really work through that um, will make things a lot smoother for you um, and it'll make your life a lot easier. Um, so uh, kind of sounds a little selfish, uh, but if you manage a great relationship with your stakeholders, um, ultimately it should uh, make your life as a PM a lot easier um, wherever you are. Um, so throughout this presentation, um, I'll give three key points um, for how to manage um, your stakeholders, um, again, depending on the type of relationship uh, that you have and what your responsibilities are as a PM. Um, some of these things may not um, apply as strongly um, depending on where you are, but I think overall uh, the general theme of these three concepts um, should uh, provide some um, value uh, to you regardless of where you are. Uh, so number one, learn who you're working with. Um, so when you are managing um, stakeholders and when you're working with others, um, it's good to have an idea of who your closest collaborators are going to be. Um, so one of the first things that I like to do um, when I start at a new company or I'm working with a different team that I'm not used to working with um, is learn who the internal team leads are. So who is the person on the sales team that I need to make sure that I am um, reaching out to and working with? Um, depending on the size of your company, you might have people who are dedicated to particular groups. Um, so uh, in the company I've worked with in the past, um, we had a dedicated marketing person who worked with us. We had a dedicated data analytic, uh, analytics person who worked with us. Um, and depending on the size of your company, that may differ, but 
Um, regardless, get acquainted with the internal team leads, get acquainted with the folks who you're going to be expected to work with on a consistent basis, because um, it'll allow you to, one, know who you need to reach out to whenever you have questions or things that you're trying to work through. Um, and, and it leads to my second point, um, where you can learn their work style. Um, paying attention to specific work styles, I find really important and has been really valuable for me. Um, you're going to be working with a lot of different people. As we know, people have different personalities. Others work in different uh, forms and fashions. Um, you may have someone on the marketing team who prefers being uh, communicated with via email. Um, and you may have someone on a customer support team who prefers to be communicated with via Slack or some sort of DM. And these things may seem small, but at the end of the day, you're working through you know, a product, you're working through a lot of different projects, you're trying to get responses, you're trying to collaborate, you're trying to move things as efficiently as possible. And knowing the type of work styles that the people you work with have and prefer uh, can help you get through those more efficiently. If I know that someone likely is able to respond to something in Slack within 24 hours, but sending it via email is gonna take them a week because their emails are always bogged down, then I'm not gonna send them something via email unless I need it to be seen by a ton of different people. Um, I'm gonna take advantage of the opportunities that I see within the types of work styles of the people that I work with uh, to make sure that I can get the answers that I need and that I can move forward uh, my projects as quickly as possible. Because at the end of the day, um, if you're not able to move forward with something, if they're not responding to you, it's not gonna be on them it's gonna be on you for not finding a more effective way of getting the response that you needed. So paying attention to the work styles of the people that you work with um, is really important because you can better understand how um, to collaborate with them. And that doesn't just go towards how you reach out to them, but it also goes to communication. Um, how do you communicate with certain people? Um, others like uh, to have constant communication. They wanna know everything. They wanna be informed every step of the way. Um, others just wanna know the big picture. They just wanna know the key points Maybe they don't want to have a check-in, you know, every so often. Um, so better understanding uh, those types of quirks and personality traits of the people that you work with is extremely helpful because you're making sure that you're maintaining a positive relationship. Um, sometimes you might be found annoying because as a PM, we got to check in and we got to get information when we can. Um, but you want people um, to be easier to work with. Uh, personally, I want people. Um, to like working with me, I find that it makes my life and my job a lot easier. Uh, your mileage may vary, but um, making sure that you at least understand the work styles that individuals have and how they prefer to be collaborated with can help you um, as you continue to collaborate with them moving forward. Um, and then finally, uh, I would say understand team priorities. Um, so working with these team leads, the representatives from every aspect that you collaborate with, um, they're kind of your gateway into learning what the team, what the priorities of these different teams are. Um, so it's helpful for me to know what are the priorities of the sales team? Uh, what are the priorities of our customer support, our account management team? Um, what are the things that they're looking for from product? Um, because when I'm trying to plan out a product roadmap, if I have particular goals that align with their goals, um, working with them and learning their priorities and, and learning the things that they feel like they need us to work on um, is really helpful for me with prioritizing, okay, so what are the things that my team should be working on? If we have a focus on improving our trust in our relationship with users, it's important for me to know what are the priorities of the trust and legal team? Uh, what do I need to build or what do I need to propose uh, building that will help move their um, initiatives forward? Because that's uh, a key part of what um, you know this area of my roadmap looks like. So um, learning who you're working with, learning your team leads, learning their work styles um, will help you understand the priorities for those teams. Um, and it'll help you be a better collaborator uh, with them moving forward and overall just a better colleague uh, within the business. Uh, my second point is communicate early and often. Um, so as a product manager, uh, a key aspect of your role is communication. Uh, you're not just working with engineers and designers, uh, user experience specialists um, to build products and release them. Um, you're working with, again, key stakeholders throughout the entire company. And they're not going to be as in tune with how things are going because they're not going to be the ones who are actively developing things. You know, they're not designing the features that you're working on. They're not investigating any bugs that come up. They're not building the new features um, that you're talking about. So. 
uh, they need to be uh, involved in the process by way of just understanding what's going on and being able to provide feedback along the way. Uh, so your role as the PM is to communicate those updates, is to communicate the status of the projects, communicate what you're planning on doing, what you're actively doing, some of the roadblocks that you're that you're getting along the way and working with them um, to kind of get over that hump and, and get through that line and make sure that you're able to deliver on the things that you've you know, committed to delivering. Um, so one of the key things you can do here is identify those key participants. You know, they might be the team leads, they might be somebody else. Uh, but identify the key participants and establish a cadence for updates. Um, so how quickly are you going to, or how frequently um, are you going to meet with these individuals? Uh, how often are they going to expect updates from you? Um, you can kind of control this. You can, as the PM, you, you have the ability to kind of control how often you're going to provide these status updates. If you're working on a project that's going to take three, four months, it might not make sense for you to provide weekly updates and you can communicate that you can let them know hey you know i'll provide you know updates every two weeks on the status um, until we reach you know x point in which case we may want to increase the cadence we may want to decrease it but as the pm it's your responsibility to establish the communication channel um, between you and the other stakeholders um, and by getting that out of the way early um, you can kind of control uh, how how often you need to do this and kind of plan your time accordingly uh, to make sure that you're able to actually uh, stay committed to the, the cadence that you agreed to. Um, the next is tailoring your message to your audience. So again, you're working with a lot of different people with a lot of different personalities and traits. Uh, the way you deliver a message to one person may be different the way that you deliver it to another. Um, so if the key participant um, if one of the key participants that you're working with is the director of sales um, versus a uh, data analyst, the way that you present an update to someone um, at a director level may be different that you, uh, maybe a different way in which you provide that message to someone at a more sort of analytic or maybe um, a junior level. Um, so what you wanna make sure that you're doing is that your message is being received properly by the recipient. Um, and that involves tailoring your message to your audience. How do you explain things to them? At what level of depth do you provide it to them? Um, what channel do you provide it to them? Again, is it an email? Is it a Slack message? Is it a Google Doc? Um, making sure that your message is being presented in a way that your audience can resonate with it and understand it will help you because you don't want to run into a situation later on where you're providing information and someone says that they didn't receive it or it didn't make sense to them and they didn't understand it. Um, and granted, yes, if someone doesn't understand something, you would have the expectation that they uh, would reach out and ask more questions, but that isn't always the case. Um, so it's doing your best to just make sure that you're trying to provide it in as clear a way as possible um, and following up with them. So if you feel like it's possible that they may not have understood the message, um, take it upon yourself to make sure that you follow up. This goes into communicating often, um, following up with people, making sure that they understood the message, make sure that if there are action items provided to them, that they understand what you're asking for. Uh, this leads to my next point. Um, stakeholders are a resource. Um, you're not just providing updates to these individuals. You're also working with them to move the project forward and ensure that it's being moved in the right direction. So if the initial intent is to build X. Um, while you're building that, you want to check in and make sure that it's continuing to look um, the way that they was, you know, would have envisioned it looking, or the way that you at least agreed upon it looking. Um, and if you have to make any changes along the way, either due to bandwidth, um, you realize that the initial thing that you were trying to build doesn't seem as effective anymore, um, and you decided to, you know, change course and go in a different direction. You need to communicate that and you want to make sure that that still fits the initial need um, that spurred your uh, decision to take on this project in the first place. Um, so using those stakeholders as a resource to continue to confirm that you're moving down the right path is going to be extremely beneficial because, again, you don't want to get halfway through a project um, and realize that something wasn't communicated to someone and then they're telling you that this isn't going to work or this isn't going to fit their needs. In which case you kind of you know wasted all of that time and now you need to go back to the drawing board um and in using your stakeholders as a resource you want to make sure you clarify your needs as well um so it, again it isn't always just communicating things to them sometimes you need things from them as well um if i'm working with marketing on getting ready to prepare a rollout for a project i want to make sure that um if i have specific things that i'm expecting them 
to uh, communicate in that in that rollout that they're aware of that. So um, working with them on the you know go to market plan, um, having them provide you know a document or an early draft of what the communication is going to look like, so you have the opportunity to review it and see what changes you may suggest or see what changes your team may suggest um, is really helpful. And you need to clarify that um, it might not be clear. Uh, that you know, marketing is 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 uh, needed to provide a draft for you to review. It depends on what company you work in and sort of what the team dynamics are. Um, so you want to make sure that you understand those things early, um, and just make sure that you communicate whatever specific needs you have for your team or for that project, um, so that your stakeholders are aware and that they can be a better collaborator for you as well. Um, communication is a two-way street, so it's not always you just providing information and providing feedback and, and updates. Um, you need those from them as well. So you need to make sure that you're communicating that um, and having that be a clear kind of component um, of your working relationship. Um, and my last point is be careful about oversharing. Um, there's a lot of detail that can be given. Um, there's a lot of technical detail that can be given while you're working with engineering on the status of, of how a product or a product is being developed. Um, so if you have a stakeholder asking for an update or they want to learn more about something, um, make sure that you're providing them with the information that they actually need to know. Um, they may not need to know the nitty gritty of every single thing that engineering is encountering. Um, if you realize that something um, went wrong or something became more complicated than you expected, you can let them know that. You can let the stakeholder know that, you know, we ran into such and such issue and it's going to cause the project to take, you know, X uh, amount of time. Um, but you may not need to go into the nitty gritty of what exactly that issue is, how we found it, what's going wrong, what we're doing, yada, yada. Um, so be careful about oversharing. Um, information overload is, is a real thing. Uh, so you don't want to overwhelm um, your stakeholders with lots of information. Um, you might have a person who just wants to get the key point and be able to move on. Um, so take, take note of that and provide the, the level of information um, that seems necessary for those users. Um, exercise your best judgment based on what you've learned um, from building that relationship and learning who your stakeholders are um, and share the you know, appropriate level of information that you are at least able to identify to make sure that everyone's informed um, and you're able to move the project forward. And my last uh, note is don't be afraid to say no. Uh, nicely, of course. Um, so ideally, uh, we do all the things. A lot of people have a lot of different ideas. They have a lot of different perspectives on what we could do as PMs to move a product forward and to improve our business. Um, but the reality is we can't do everything. Um, resources may be a constraint, time may be a constraint, um, and it just may not make sense. Um, not every idea is the most effective one. Um, so it's okay to say no. Um, as a PM, it's actually your job in many cases to say no. Uh, because we can't do everything. So um, make sure that you know you kind of build the, the comfortability um, to do so. And by having a great relationship with your stakeholders, it'll help you feel more comfortable doing that because they understand you, they understand your perspective, they understand how you operate and what your team is trying to achieve. And if they have faith in you as a PM and they have faith in you as a colleague, um, then that will make it more comfortable for you to be able to say no. Um, there are a lot of times where we're looking into various different things that we want to do. Um, we want to improve our user experience. We want to, you know, release new features that uh, may add more revenue. Um, and a lot of ideas can come from a lot of different places. Um, it's very common for me um, to brainstorm with a lot of different individuals. I like to hear ideas from everywhere, not just within product, but within these different teams. And I can't deliver on every single idea. Um, so I have to make the decision with my team, with my manager in some cases, to decide what are the ideas that we think are best and which ones do we want to move forward with? What are the ones that we want to defer, uh, things that we might want to address later? And what are the things that we think, you know, we, we, this doesn't sound like it's really going to work for us. I don't think that this is a great idea for us right now. Um, and you want to back those decisions up with research and data. You don't want to just say no to something because you don't like the sound of it. Um, cause that's not going to resonate as well. That might be offensive to others that might be off putting to others that you're kind of just dismissing their ideas without any sort of justification for why other than you just don't like it. So do some research, uh, look up research out there for, um, you know, similar things that have been done in the past, other companies, see if it's something your competitors have done in the past. Um, it's possible that you've done it as a company historically, but it was, you know, years and years ago. 
um, gain some insights on the things that people are suggesting or others of members of your team are suggesting. Um, utilize your data uh, analysts and your business intelligence teams um, to gather data to help back up um, the decisions that you're making, um, because that'll help build confidence in your stakeholders that you are stepping in the right direction. You're not just um, choosing to, to not do things based on personal opinion, but you're looking at data and metrics to help validate why you're making those decisions. Because um, at the end of the day, it's hard to dispute data. Um, obviously, you can manipulate data to look in certain ways uh, that you want it to look, but um, as long as you're pulling the numbers and you're telling the story um, in a sensible and logical way, um, use that to help back up the decisions that you're making. Um, and don't be afraid to say no um, to things that just don't look like they're going to be a good fit for your team or your company um, based on where it is currently. Um, and the last thing is compromise. Um, you don't want to always just say, no, you're not going to do something. Um, for some time, you might be able to say no. But after a while, if you're known as someone who just says no to stuff consistently, um, it might make it difficult for people to want to work with you. They might not have trust in your ability um, as a collaborator or as a, as a PM because you're um, just not really uh, collaborating and working with them properly. So learn how to compromise. Uh, someone may suggest a solution to a problem that you're facing and the solution that they provided doesn't sound like it'll work, but the concept and the theme behind that solution seems to make sense. So maybe find alternate possibilities of ways to resolve that problem based on the theme or the idea that they presented, but not the actual uh, solution that they said themselves. Um, that's a form of compromising. Hey, uh, you presented this really great idea. We don't think this is going to be the best solution, but in a similar vein, we think that, you know, why is going to be a, a better uh, path for us to pursue. Um, that can go over really well um, because that way that person feels like they contributed. They don't feel like they're completely dismissed. They understand through the research and the data that you provided that what they thought of as a solution isn't going to be the best fit, but you at least considered their idea and found an alternate path that kind of speaks to the direction that they were thinking of, but is going to be a more effective method of achieving that, the results that you're looking for. Um, as a PM, I feel like compromising is one of the things that I do extremely frequently. Um, cause again, not every idea is the most effective one. We can't do everything individuals ask for. Um, so learning how to compromise and find other paths to move forward while taking into consideration the ideas they have and, you know, being respectful and working with them through those ideas, um, is going to be extremely helpful for you as a PM because, um, again, you want to maintain a good working relationship. It will make your life easier. Um, it can be a lot of work, depending on the size of the, of the company, um, the number of individuals that you're working with. It can be a lot of work to, to learn who all of these different leads are um, and collaborate with all of them, kind of take into account their different work styles. And you may not be able to do it all the time, but it's something to keep in mind and it's something to strive uh, to be able to do consistently because building these better working relationships um, as a project manager, as a product manager, as someone who is uh, going to be focused on maintaining a great relationship because that's uh, necessary in order for you to do your job properly, um, it's in your best interest to, to make sure that um, you're compromising and you're doing these things well. Um, so that is it uh, for my presentation. Uh, thanks for attending. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, my name is again is Mark Hurdle um, and appreciate your time.